The father took his spirit away from mankind because of the wickedness. This is why today, thank you, my father, my king. This is why today people get so frustrated because their lives are, are, are so chaotic. I am a living testimony of that. Okay? So let's not play games, brothers and sisters. And so you will have people out here, including myself, at, in the past. We, we were frustrated, wasn't we? Shaking our fists, rolling our eyes, and smacking our teeth, looking up to heaven. Or when we was in those churches sucking our teeth and saying, well, if God is really real, why would he come down here and speak to me? What arrogance. What disrespect to say something like that. And we all are guilty of it in one way or another. But it's because of our own wickedness and because of our own selfishness. Our Heavenly Father, and I don't blame him anymore. Thank you, my Father, my King. I don't blame him. Why should he come to a people who deliberately wants to be wicked? Why should he come to you? Now, it's a difference if, you, if, if he's training you out of your wicked state to come to him in his son's righteousness. But if you say in your heart, I don't want to be righteous, why should he come to you? Why should he save you? When you yourself is wicked because you want to be wicked. Why should he do? He has the right to extract his, his precious presence away from us. Until we get right and cry out to him and ask him and his son to help us. And when he sees that sincerity in your heart. Like his words say, you draw nigh or you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. Thank you, my father, and my king. Let's go back to John. I got to John in the first chapter. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people out here talking about they Israel. A lot of you don't, a lot of us, we don't even understand. Us, we don't understand what Israel really means. See what you got to understand. We, as the people now, we have to look for the eternal Israel. We, a lot of us, looking for physical Israel. But our king, he's an eternal being. He came down here to get eternal life. To a dead people. To create, the, to create a new nation. Of kings and queens. You understand? He made us kings and priests. To his father. He's of the priesthood. Of as it says. Uh, many people we pronounce it. Uh, Melchizedek or uh, Marquisedec. We're under that priesthood. Do you understand? So this is a new. This is a, this is a set apart nation. Everything's clean. This is the true Israel. This is the king of Israel. He came back from that. Yes, real. The, the, the Israel, the flesh, they rejected him. And this is why he rejected them. He did not cast them away utterly. Why? Because his son was to come. But now he, 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 he commands all men to repent. And he's going to bring us into that eternal. Oh, thank you, my father, my king. He's going to bring us into the eternal Israel. Why you got your eyes focused on the land now? The, what, the, what is spoken about in Revelation? The Revelation. What is coming down from the Almighty? The new Jerusalem. This is the eternal city that's coming down. Let, let them fight over the physical land. Because in the end, our Heavenly Father is going to destroy everything. But that new city, that's what we're looking for. That's what the eternal Yahshua is looking for. Thank you, my Father, my King. John, the first chapter. And on the first chapter. And let's look at this. This is something that a lot of us, we've read it, but we haven't really focused on it. It's time that we focus with our Father's in our king's attention span. You understand? Because ours is short term. 
Focus on their attention span and the revelation will come to you. Yehuchanan, the first chapter. Let's start at the 10th verse. This is something we got to think. This proves that what I was led to say to you is true. Their truth, not my own. That he's looking, he's choosing an eternal, he's created an eternal race of people. Does not matter about your color of skin. This is an eternal, an eternal inheritance. Not a physical one. Listen. Yehuchanan chapter 1 or John 1. Starting at 10th verse. Speaking of our master, listen carefully. It says, he was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Listen. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. This is speaking of physical Yisrael. Do you understand? He came down. This is the eternal being now, Master Yah. He came down here in flesh as a man to a fleshly people. They didn't receive him, not as a whole. But listen to this. Listen. Verse 12. But as many as received him, you see this? To them gave he power to become the sons of the Almighty, even to them that believe on his name. This is something that we missed. We've read it many times, but we've missed it. Now, here's an eternal being coming down. This is the son coming down from the father. He came to his own as a whole. They rejected him as the prophecy spoke. But to the ones that received him, out of, out of the physical Yisrael and, and the physical Gentiles now, Let's stop playing around. As they received him, he gave them something. He gave them power to become. That's something we got to really focus on. He's given them power to become something. To become sons of the Almighty. Now we're going to see if this is flesh or not. or this, We're going to see if this is flesh or if it's eternal. If it's spirit. Listen. Verse 13 is going to answer it for you. Listen, verse 13. Listen now. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the Almighty. Now, there is a physical Yasriel. That is true. But that physical is going to be merged with the eternal. Do you understand? We're dealing with the eternal creator, not a physical one. He came down here in physical flesh, his son did. But he is eternal. And he's looking for an eternal people that's going to serve him. Listen, my family. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. That's powerful. That's powerful. If you all can really see it. Let's go to John the 8th chapter. And let's start at verse 12. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Thank you, my father, my king, for the correction. Before you go to John 8, go back to John the first half. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Something interesting. Look, just one verse here. Look at verse 18. It says, going back to John the first chapter. We're going to go back today, but let's focus here. Go look at verse 18 quickly. No man hath seen the Almighty at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. That's something we got to understand. This is what makes him so special. He's the only qualified rabbi, as we say rabbi. Or rabbi Ayi. He is the only one who knows everything of the, of the Torah. These people out here who say they, they teach the, uh, the, these, saying they uh, rabbis and these, they can wear as many uh, shawls that they want to wear. 
They can speak as much Hebrew or Aramaic as they want to speak. They can have the kafa or the, uh, the, you know, the little yarmulkes. They can have all, all, all that show, the, the, the zit zits. They can have all that stuff. And still, without the true Rabbi Yahi, Master Yahushua, they don't know that. They don't know the law. They don't know it. And they can't show the Father because they don't have the Son. And if you have a problem, well, that's on you. But on the judgment day, you're going to be dealt with. Now, let's go back to the Yuhukanah in the 8th chapter. And let's start at verse 12. And listen what it says. Listen what our master says. It says, Then spoke Yahushua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. That's power. When you have Yahushua, our master, when, when he's with you, how can you be ignorant? How can you be ignorant of the scriptures? We got the best rabbi, rabbi as they say. We got the best teacher of, of, of these covenants. And he's teaching us of our most high teacher, the heavenly father. So if we got him and his father, what's the problem? If there's an issue out here, in your little debates out here, in your discussions. The question is we all need to ask ourselves before we even engage in any dialogue. Which one of us here is coming in the spirit of the Son? Because if we both love the Son, we're going to get this truth. You understand? If we both love the Father, if there's no hidden agenda, if we really want to show the Father, and it might be a misunderstanding amongst the two of us, or three of us, or what have you. If we love the Son, huh, we're going to get to this truth. You see this? But if it's not about the Son, if it's not about the Father, if it's about your own image and your own little thing you got going, well, that's what it's about. And, and you're going to still have confusion. Listen, verse 13. Now, this is interesting. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, you bear record of yourself. Your record is not true. That's a bold statement for them to make. Now, does that mean Yahushua was bragging about himself? No. He, he merely spoke the truth about himself. Who he was. But look at the scribes and Pharisees. Now, these are other people who were deep in the scripture now. Notice, how, notice the war and battle between the scriptures. This is a very sophisticated battle. You understand? The scriptures is in the centerpiece of the battle. Listen, my brothers and sisters, you all got to understand. Hashitan understands these scriptures better than a lot of you all out there. And the only way to be able to defeat him is through our Father not King defeating him through the knowledge of their word. Not your own knowledge of, your, of, of the Father's word. It doesn't work that way. Because Hashitan can twist and trip you up very easily. But if you have our King and our Father with you, Hashitan can't do nothing to you. He may throw the word at you, his version of it, but it won't move you or shake you because you know the true word. Verse 14, Yahushua answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know where I came and where I go. But you cannot tell where I come or where I go or whence I come or where I go. You see this? He's letting them know they have no knowledge. He knows about himself. They're the ones that don't know. Notice how the thing that they're lacking is that they're not making an attempt to get to know him. The process to be saved, for real, is to be able to, to know him. To know, to want to get to know him. Just like when you have a wife. How can a person grow into a relationship with a woman or vice versa, a woman with a man, 
how can they grow together if there's no process of getting to know one another? It's not going to work if you haven't reached that stage or you don't have that desire. More so with our Father and our King. There must be a desire to know them in order to receive salvation. Verse 15, he says, you judge after the flesh. I judge no man. Listen. Thank you, my father, my king. That shows that their conclusions were always in the flesh of men. Their judgments, the way that they view things, they were so shallow. They had no, they had no deep spiritual, you know, no spiritual knowledge of nothing. They, they, they read a lot, but they didn't understand it. They truly didn't understand it. Verse 16, he says, and yet if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. That's powerful. See how he always talked about his Father? It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bear witness of me. That's powerful. See, he's letting him know, my father, no, he, he bears witness of me. I bear witness of him and he bears witness of me. Just like our father, our king had me to say earlier, that when you look at the old covenant, as we call it, you look at the previous covenants in the past with man, it was the promise of the son. And, when, and now, it was, basically, the father was honoring him. He's letting him know, my son is coming. And then when you go to the new covenant, you see now the son, he's giving that same honor back. He's teaching them the Father's teaching. All of you out there who think that the Messiah taught his own teaching, he did not. He talked about his Father. Listen, my family. Verse 19. Then said they unto him, where is your Father? <laughs> Thank you, my Father, my King. Look at that. Oh, man, could you imagine it? Where is your Father? Just, just arrogant. Just like how people are doing that today. They say, where, where is this almighty one at? Where is he at? Tell him to come down here. Let me tell you something. You all don't really want to see our heavenly father. You don't want to really see your who are coming at you. Because when I become, it's a problem. So, in the name of my father, my king, be wise with your mouth. Because when you really get up, when you really see him coming, it's going to be issues if you haven't gotten things right with him and his son. So be careful with that mouth that he gave you. Because he will shut it. Do you understand? Verse 19. Then said they unto him, where is your father? And Yahushua will answer, you neither know me nor my father. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. Wasn't that something similar that he, that he was telling his disciples? We can't know Abba without knowing our king. We can't. We got to know our master to know the father. We, that's, that's how it works. Listen, brothers and sisters, verse 20. These words spoke Yahushua in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. You hear that? What, a, what an encouragement, isn't it? Because that goes to show that when you're truly a man of the Most High and his son... You don't got to worry about nobody doing anything to you. And, just to sh and I remember the times when my Heavenly Father, my King, was training me. When he had me out there in the street corners, not yelling at people. But when he had me out there in those, in those neighborhoods. And I remember when he lead, used to lead me to talk with them. You understand? And they, I was walking and, and the men, the gangsters, they would move aside. And at one point I was thinking, hmm. And I Heavenly Father and my King stopped me real quick. And they let me know, my son, they don't fear you, they fear me. And I remember those times as a young, I'm a young man, but I remember in my younger days, our father, like he had me walk and had me to speak to those who was in gangs. Those who had guns and all that. And it was my heavenly father, my king, I'm alive today because of them. Because I'm telling you, he brought me through those, those areas, those rough areas that a lot of you so-called leaders out there will not go. You won't go. But if I find like he let me and, and, and had give me a lot of training out there to speak to some of those selected few who really wanted to know him and his son. 
But our Father, our King, remind me, don't boast in your flesh, my son. It is me and my son that they fear, not you. Because without me, the enemy will snatch you away. And these things that I had to learn, I'm still learning. So I wanted all my brothers out there, don't get boastful in your flesh. Because you will lose if you do. You understand? The enemy will take you out quickly. Thank you, my father, my king. Verse 21. Then said Yahushua again unto them, I go my way, and you shall see, and you shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Where I go, you cannot come. That's powerful. It's a warning. It's a warning. If we don't focus on the son, when he comes to us with his hands out, and if we move his hands away and he clenches his hands at us there's no salvation for you so we need to be wise my family those of you my brothers out there who are going against our king you better be wise you're going against your own king and you think you're going to get to our, our most high king it's not going to work You can't get to the grand highest king without our heavenly king who is on high. Our heavenly father has elected him under the priesthood, the eternal priesthood of Malachi Zadok. And so if we cannot come to him and come under that priesthood and become eternally changed into the new eternal nation of Yahshua, which come which comp uh, in him there is no 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 uh, Yahudia, there is no no ethnos, there is no Greek or Jew as we say today. There's none of there's no black and white. It's only eternal life. That's it. We have to come to terms with that. There's no getting to the Father without going to our King. Point blank. You do what you want to, but understand this: you reject Him, you're going to be rejected. Thank you, my Father, my King. Listen, my family. Verse 22. It says, Then said the Yehudiah, Will he kill himself? Because he says, Where I go, you cannot come. You see this? Look at how, look at how dull their intelligence are, is. Look at it. They were so dull. They couldn't understand. Verse 23, and he said unto them, you are, now, thank you, my father, my king. Can you imagine Yahushua saying this to us? Then you can see how offensive these people were when he said this. Verse 23, and he said unto them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I said, therefore, unto you that you shall die in your sin. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Could you imagine how they were looking at him? It wasn't that Yahushua. Now, now, if you're not analyzing this right, it can make you think that Yahushua was very arrogant. But he wasn't. He has the right to be, but he wasn't. He was telling them the truth. He was showing them, our Heavenly Father, through him. Showing them their stupidity. Because if they would have came to him, if they would have received him, he would have given them power to become sons of the Almighty. He would have given it to them, but they didn't want it. Just like a lot of us don't want it today. Thank you, my father, my king. Listen here. Verse 25. It says, Then said they unto him, Who are you? <laughs> and Yahushua said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. Look at the arrogance. First they asked them, you can see the nastiness. Just, don't just get caught up in how I'm reading it. But uh, you can see it. In the, if you really focus in the spirit of our Father, you can see the nastiness of this, these people. First they, they was asking, who is your father? Now they're saying, who are you? These, these were arrogant men. And we all can relate those of us who were enemies of our master and his heavenly father. Weren't we arrogant people, weren't we? Until he had to teach us his mind and bring us through his humility. 
Do you see this? Verse 26, he says, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I heard of him. There he, there he, look, there he goes again. He's letting him know, my father sent me. I'm speaking his words. It was hard for them to, to accept that because in their minds, they're looking at the Torah like, well, well, well we, we know this this uh, Almighty, we know him. And he's saying that he knows him. You see what I'm saying? So they had a problem with Yahushua. Well, they really had a problem with him. Do you understand? Plus, he was young. You know, Yahushua was in his 30s. You had a lot of these men who were very old men. And so they're looking at their own experience and their own credentials. And they're looking at the Messiah and they're looking like, who is he? Who does he think he is? This is basically what they're saying. Not understanding that he was the very one that was showing the Father. That's powerful. Listen, my family. It says here, they understood not that he spoke to them of the Father. You see that? Now, that's powerful. Thank you, my Father, my King. He's talking, he's been talking to them. And as you read and you study the Messiah, he, he was saying, my, my, my doctrine, my teaching was not mine, it was given to me. He said things like, my Father is greater than I. He was saying all these beautiful things about his Father. He was telling them to be perfect. Even on what we know is the Sermon on the Mount, when he was talking to the people, he was telling them to be you perfect even as your father is in heaven. You know, when people came to him, he said things like, why do you call me good? There's only one good, even the Almighty. Things like that. Yahushua was giving his father the credit, but these people still, in all that knowledge and wisdom, wisdom that they had, they couldn't understand that what our master was doing, he was showing the father. I hope that many of you all have grown and continue to grow. I thank you, my Father, my King, for your wisdom. I love you all, my brothers and sisters, and you take care.